Hello, everybody. This is uh, Marco Chen from South Survey. I'm in Guangzhou. Today, I will give you a total presentation for our brand new total station. The Navy station. I record a short VCR on the construction side in order to show you Navy station performance better. Let's watch first. Hello everybody, this is Marco Chan from South Survey, the engineering product manager from International Business Division. Today, I will give you a presentation about our brand new total station, the Navy Station, which integrates the intelligent operating system, GNSS technology, and with dual laser EDM as one. Navy Station delivery fast and reliable positioning using all available satellites with 496 channels to produce a high precision solution. Benefit from the minimum size and lightweight, our own developed GNSS ball can be complete match the requirement of total station and meet the demands of your specific jobs. It also comes with a variety of the data communication options. One is the UHF radio mode. One is the external network mode. As we can see in the screen, we can choose the UHF mode here and go to all the network mode here. About the mechanical structure, Navy Station features world's first dual laser EDM with the 2000 meter refractory range, combined with a stable intense ball axis you can be confident that it can be achieved the high level of one second accuracy with every measurement. About the technical introduction, I will show you later for the details. Next, let's talk something about software, which is also the most important part. Navy Station have the abundant onboard software that is easy to use and flexible based on the unique Android platform. Expect the powerful data collecting software, and the mapping software and a special package of the road, bridge and tunnel on board. You can select or develop your own software on Android platform. We have a connection platform called TS Server to help you connect the link edge between the hardware to your own software. The specification and commands can be read through TS Server. As you can see, I am on the construction site right now. Today, I will using the Navy Station to do a simple measurement. I will set up the Occupy Point in the random place to make a measurement and show you how it convert the virtual coordinate system to the real coordinate system we need. So the first, we go to the setup station point. In the station point setup, we go to got the GNSS data. Here is the random place I choose. So the first, we can see the details for the satellite. We get the satellite details here and we and we got the we got the fixed coordinate here and then I press all to save the pawn. And for the backside pawn I can using any angle. Any angle I want. But this backside I need to aim the next backside I will I will using later. So I set. So now the feed station is a setup finish. I can start to measurement. So I just measure around 10 points here. So for the Navy station, we also have the other function for the graphy. So this uh, we can load the map. So here we can see, I measure the palm is here. But this is not the real coordinate because I just set up the back side in the random angle. I just want to show you now the map shows like this one. And then I will move the station to the, to the back side palm. And then I will using the reduction function. At that time, we can get the real coordinate we need. So we can check this map a little bit later to, to compare what is the difference. So 
after I make the side shot in the station one, I will move the station to the station two. That is the I set up the angle in period station one in random angle. But when I go to there, I can get the real angle and real coordinate system between these two points. And at that time, I can re reduction all the side shots from the station one and convert to the real coordinate system. So now I set up the the station on the previous backside point I random choose. I got the GNSS data and this is the no point and the station one became the no point. So I step the station as the no point and I using the Google function for reduction to change to change the first station or the side shot point in that station points in the virtual coordinate system and using the reduction choose the correct backside and he will recalculate and will show us after the reduction the real coordinate system we can see on the map here what is the difference compared to the before today the outdoor simple measurement demonstration is done I will present the other details technology from the Navy station in indoor I see you later So welcome back to Indo. So let's take a quick look for the key features and the specs. Even I make some introduction in the VCR. So for the Navy station, we have the world's first dual laser technology EDM, Android operating system, high resolution TFT screen, expandability SDK, abundant data exchange method. Visualization graphic data import. For the key specification, it supports all constellations, including the GPS, Galileo, Gononas, BDS, and it contains 496 channels. For the internal UHF radio, the power is the 0 0.4 watt and working range 8 kilometer. And for the cross network, the data link, it the range is the 13 kilometer. And for the EDM part, with the 2,000 meter refractory range and 1 plus 1 ppm, 1 second accuracy. So I will start from the software, not like in past I make the presentation, I always uh, present the hardware platform first. But for the Navy station, I want to show the software part first. And from the VCR, I already show you the, the main function for the Navy station. So in here, in the office, I, I would like to introduce some other functions on the software. So on Navy station, we have the two default program and two optional program. The first program is the TS server. This is the service program. Connect the hardware platform and the software it can distribute the measurement result to the different program. For the survey star, it is a basic data collect program in the field. And the mapping star is a drawing program when you survey in the field. And it supports the pond, night, plane, and have many tools to help you drawing the map when doing data collect. The RBT star, it is a special program focused on, on the row, bridge and the tunnel project. So we start this the, the survey star first. From this picture we can see uh, it is uh, like the, the function just like the similar normal TS function but when we have the GNSS ball integrate as one it should be something different. I would like to talk about the reduction function this is uh, one of the most useful function for the Navy station. When I have a Navy station, I can set up the free station as an occupied pond anywhere and set up the back side as I want. I do the same way in the VCR. And for, for our experience, normally when we're using the total station set up the control network in the surveying field, the first point is uh, to lead 
the occupied pawn to the survey area. Sometimes the occupied pawn or the no pawn location is far away to the survey area. So when we have the navy station, we no need to spend more time to lead the pawns from the occupied pawn to the survey area. So when we have the reduction function also things is the I can set up the back side anywhere and then I use the reduction function to change the coordinate system to the real one I want. So for this picture actually is that I measure I measure the the pawns on the construction side. In the left picture we can see is the before reduction. The because I set up the back side as the angle I want, I input is the 55 degrees. But we can see on this map, actually it is wrong. We know because they have the background map show us the coordinate shows here is not correct. And this is a before the reduction we connect the, the we measure the coordinate by the total station. And the first line, this coordinate is that we get it from the GNSS receiving board. And then I choose it as a station, free station. And when I move the station to the backside point on the station two, at that time, I use the GNSS receiving board. I can get the real coordinate on the station two. So in here, I using the reduction function to change all the side shot I do on the station one. Totally, I measure 20 points, but here I just list eight points to show. So we can see here the coordinate. For example, in the point three, the large three digit is the three five one, and here is the five four three, and also the e coordinate, the east coordinate. So after we reduction, we can see on this map. Okay, the, actually this is the construction side area. And for the other friendly function is the automatic update. Uh, it can automatically update online when we release a new firmware version. So when we, re when we release a new firmware version, it can be detected by itself and asked we need to upgrade or not. So from the first picture, we can see the old version I'm using is the 19 October 29. And then when I, in the 2020, I test the instrument again, he will, he will remind, me, remind me there's a new version from and want to update or not. I just click the update now and he will download and automatically update. Finally, we can get the update version. So this function is to keep our users always can use the latest version we, we release. And for the other option program is the mapping star. Mapping star is now is a, for the optional onboard program. It offers special drawing tools to help you measure and drawing map in the field. It have the four model. One is the station, one is the job map, and that. As we using the total station in past, actually data collect in the field just the first step we do. We need to make the project done. After the data collect in the field, we need to download the data and proceeding the data in the PC software. Normally, it's drawing a map. So here we can see, I using the, the map star to measure the same points on the same construction site, but this is a quite different for compared to the survey star. From the, this picture we can see here is the wall I measure. And this, I measure a couple small, the simple building here. When I enlarge, it will give you the property by the program. And when I export the data, I can export the coordinate data and the raw data and also the graphic data. When I export this, the drawing file, 
and open by the cat file uh, cache software on the PC side, we can get this one. So it saves our time to join the map in the office. For the other package, have the row, bridge, and tunnel star. This program now, uh, we are under developed the English version. So here I only have the Chinese picture to show you. For the row, it allow you design and stay out the row data on the construction side. And for the terminal, it also you can define the alignment for the horizontal and the vertical. Also, he can calculate the exaction, the stay out point, and the overview or the shot of the geo on the date and so on the data. And for the data format, uh, for the coordinate data, we have the DAT, DXF, TXT, and CSV. For the raw data, we have the TXT format. And for the graphic data, we have the CAS and the GBKG. And the TS server is the distribution platform. The function is for this program is allow the application to read the hardware info or input the setting value here. As we can see on the left picture, uh, all the setting, whatever we, we running on the survey star, mapping star, or the RTP program, all the individual program, the setting actually is connect to here, to this basic server settings. And on the right side, this is a raw data, data output, the screenshot. And based on this server service, it allow Navi station no running multitask in the different program. We offer SDK for third party to develop your own onboard software, such as a special for shipbuilding, large workshop facility installation, oil tank project, and so on. So we can see here, the, this line is the hex type command. This is the we including in the SDK pack. So the developer, they can using this one to develop their own software. This is uh, we want to enlarge our customer group for the Android platform. So uh, up to here, I finished the software part explanation, and we will go into the hardware part. So for the Navi station, we have the new EDM technology. So the first is uh, we think about is uh, what are the advantage of this new EDM. So let's see a few short video first to get some image about this new EDM technology. The first outdoor 200 meter. So when we measure around the 200 meter, we can see the data the data jump only one millimeter, and the speed is quite fast. And the tie gate on this is the, the building sidewall. And when we enlarge the measurement distance to around 400 meter, you can see the slope distance. Two six one, two six five, two six three. So the maximum data jump only under five millimeter. Okay, let's go further and we change the target. And this time I aim on a electronic tower. The range is the five hundred fifty meter. This is the target I aim on the yellow one. So using it, I press the metric key. And we can see 030, 323, 032. So, and then we go further. We go to 1,663 meters.
so free free two three five. So, through this couple short uh, distance measurement outdoor, we, we can see the most advantage for this dual laser EDM is about the uh, accurate, stable, and faster. And as we know, when we walk in the field, mostly the lumpism range is under 500 meters. So, when we can see in the, in the short video, uh, 200 meter, 400 meter, the data jump is, is quite stable. So actually this is the most benefit bring to our users. And not only about this one, we can see the other data form to compare the old time we have. The first form is we, our new EDM, the data tag. On 500 meter, the data jump less than six millimeter. Just so, in around 200 meter, it only one millimeter data jump, and 400 meter is a five millimeter. So, around 800 meter, it less than 10 millimeter. Not only the in, not not only on the refractories, the accurate is increased. Even in the prism range, the offset, we even offset of the prism center around three mini. It still can less than one millimeter accuracy. But compared to our op type on um, 400 meter, it's around 25 millimeter data jump. So this is the most benefit and the direct feeling can bring to the users. Our the new EDM technology increase a lot. So for this dual laser EDM, we need to ask is uh, how we make this come true and what technology make it outstanding. And in the normal EDM, there are three models. One is the light reducing model, one is the in-out path model, one is the mode model. In here, I would like to sh tell you some about the, the motor's function and the total station working theory. For the light reducing motor, he, he is a filter motor. He works with the filter, and his main function is uh, when we using in the prism mode, because the prism refracted signal is quite strong, so, but when we measure the target, the distance from the couple meters to 100 meters, the, reflect, the return signal, if too close, is too strong. If the target is too far, so the return signal is weak. So we need this the light reducing motor to control all the return signal should be in a certain range so that our EDM CPU can process the signal. And for the in-out path motor, the function is for when when the laser beam goes outside, all the return signal, not only including the laser return signal, including other noise, the car sound, the car noise, and the sunlight, and the other influencer signal will come back through the EDM lens. So the in-out path motor is when we send out a laser beam, that's what we call out path. But we need to keep one in-path laser signal to compare the return signal, which one is the correct in the certain range we need it, so that our CPU can proceed, proceeding the electronic signal. And for the mode motor, is the control from switch from the prism mode to the non-prism mode. So basically, is the, the in-out path motor is the, is make sure the EDM accuracy so the question is, uh, this motor is so important. So why we use the dual laser technology to control the motor instead of the mechanical parts? How to keep the distance accuracy? 
So in here we can see uh, this picture is the new laser dialogue and the bottom one is the old laser dialogue. And we can see we have the two laser dialogue for emitting laser out for emitting laser. And how it works, this one. Because the first we develop our own develop the laser drive circuit we call SA11. So it will it will control by this circuit SA11. When we need the out path, we're using the out path laser dialogue. And when we need the in path, we're using the path laser dialogue. This is controlled by the circuit SA11. And the advantage for this switch by the electronic control is the switch time of the circuit control is more faster than the motor switch time. But there are another issue will come out when we're using the two laser dialogue because it's the, the frequency drift by the temperature difference cause the distant drift. Uh, let me explain here because the, the laser dialogue is the, uh, when we're emitting the laser, we have the certain frequency. The frequency is uh, generated by the crystal oscillator. So when we're using this one, when we're using two laser dialogue, it means have the two laser frequency. We need to make sure this two laser frequency in the really accurate range so the it will it won't cause the frequency drift to cause finally the result is different. So in order to solve this problem, we improvement our electronic circuit. The first, because we're using the circuit control. So the laser goes out and the return signal is speed up. It means that more and more, more signal we need to proceed in. So the EDM processor, we upgrade from the Cortex M3 to the M4. And at the same time, we reduce the power consumption and increase the proceeding speed. And for the distance and the speed, and the relationship is not about the times, it's about a square. For example, I measure 10 meter, the noise signal is 10. But when I measure 100 meter, it means the, the distance just increase 10 times. But the signal come back, it will increase 100 times. It's a square relationship. So here, we need to reduce the interference because the, the noise of the signal increases a lot. So we need to reduce interference of the light with the less straight light. The value of the return signal will be closer to the actual value. That's why the measurement is accuracy. And also, because the electronic tag is, is shorter, because the frequency we increase up to the 115 megahertz. So at the same time, we also need to upgrade our, our internal electronic clock, the SC18 clock circuit chip with the shorter tape. So the speed of the time calculation is increased twice as fast as, fast as before. And actually, the other thing is the Optimize the whole circuit design with the less interface. Under non-piston mode, the SA2 transmitter amplifier is able to cancel the interference signal on the same frequency to the circuit. The SA2 is our totally developed by ourselves. So this, this SA2 is the, is the key part for the electronic circuit we develop or we solve these the electronic issues. But when we improve the electronic, that is not enough for the total station EDM because we know for the total station, we call it is the mechanical, optical, electronic, free pass combined as one. So the thing is for this free pass, they interactive to each other. The 
optical correct not means the electronic is okay but we need to make the three parts the mechanical electronic and the optical work together well and achieve our our requirement for the accuracy so here we can see the we changed our optical path the first we can see on the top this is our optic EDM so the number A is the emitting laser dialog and he will go to the tail of the mirror and refraction first time go to the center of the telescope and the laser dot goes out to aim our target but for the new EDM we change the position for the laser dialog to the seven so we can see here has the two la two laser dialog one is for the out path when we need to seem the tight aim and measure the target outside the out path laser dialog send only one refraction and goes out and controlled by the SA11 circuit it will switch to the 7 here to send the in path laser go to the receiving fiber developer the uh, directory and for the optical things uh, the most difficult thing is uh, the optical signal is, it is invisible but all the optical signal is affect the distant accuracy and all the light return signal will transfer to the electronic signal then we process the electronic signal for the lens for the lens object objective lens on here we call or we call some prisms in the internal optical path uh, we all know the material is a gas when we decide or optimize for the optical system we need to consider a lot of the parameter such as the coating sealing anti-shock keening level light transmittance because they are our eyes to see the target also they are the EDM eyes to aim the target for the EDM technology the package is, is that we need to handle the optical signal and the electronic signal relationship for the optical part try to try to filter more influence the signal for the electronic process after enlarge all the signal we got and then we process the correct signal maybe this drawing is uh, hard to understand so I make a, the objective lens pictures so here we can see here this is the R6 objective lens and this is uh, our new EDM we call R15 and for the we make a very big change the first we cancel this tube we cancel this tube and for the new EDM lens we drill a hole in the center make the laser goes out didn't affect by the tube bit when we using before this is uh, for set of the screw strikes in the R6 EDM we fix the objective screw by one by two fixed screw and one passing ring now we drill a hole the laser can be goes out directly no relay to the objective lens position therefore to increase the spe stability during a hole or the lens is a complicated technology it is easy to damage the lens during during we test many times and finally we got a solution so for the lens and the laser dialog position change and we can see this is can be filling by the users on the top is our our laser dot size on the bottom is the Leica laser dot size so on the first picture the distance is the 10 meter and this is the R6 laser, laser dot the diameter for the laser dot is a 5 millimeter for the new EDM is a 3 millimeter and for the second pictures the distance is the 35 meters and diameter 16 millimeter and for the new EDM 12 millimeter it means the even the further further distance the laser dot size gets smaller than before and here is the 15 15 meter 22 meter for the R6 EDM 
and 16 meter and 60 millimeter for the new EDM. So we can see this is the mechanical part structure for the R6 EDM. The first here is the laser dialog emitting goes out and this is a reflect, reflection prism. First time refraction to the center, the pro prism, and second time refraction goes out. In past, we fixed this lens by two screw and the press ring. So when we adjust the emitting laser axis, we need to loosen, we need to loosen the two fixed screw first. At that time, the, the lens is in loosened status. So after we adjust the emitting axis, but the screw will have the stress release. So we will affect the accuracy for the axis. And for the new part, for the new EDM, we change the mechanical part. Here is the emitting lasers for outdoor. So we add a mirror in the central and he can focus the laser dot only one time refraction. And here we drill the hole. So the axis goes out, not relate to the lens anymore. So in this time, we can increase the stability for the emitting lasers. Actually, is the, for this the design diagram is not easy to understand. So I prepare, I prepare to type the EDM here. I will show you in here to give you an explanation and let you more easy to understand. So this type is our old type, the R6 EDM. So we can see here, this is the laser dialog on the bottom side. So when he go out the laser, This is the motor. This is the refractor prism. The laser goes out and go to center and comes out. And this one is the new tie EDM. We totally change. We can see here have the dual laser. This one is the out path laser go into the center and comes out. And this one is the receiving fiber. Here on the bottom is the in path emitting laser. He will directly send the laser signal go for the, the receiving fiber here. So we can do a simple test here to prove the to compare the difference. This is the old tie EDM. So now we go to the simple measurement, the distance. So continue mode. So we measure. We can hear the sound. Click it, click it, click it. 你可以看到这个吗? 可以拍到这个激光点吗? 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 So we can see the laser dot here 
is a fraction, and the sound is a cookie, cookie. Every time, every time it go to the in path, out path, in path, out path to get the correct result. And for our new EDM, For our new EDM, we can feel we, we can feel the sound is more speedy than the mechanical part control. Because for the old type, for the old type, it is uh, they has a limitation by the motor switch time. Okay, 可以了,這裡你就切回來吧。And for the technical explanation and for the total station, actually is not only work in the R&D department. For the total station, actually it is really important for the production control. In the next, I will show you a video from the factory side to, to see how we produce the, how we production the total station. And I will give you the explanation. So the first, this is the bearing ball vertical axis. Now we using the bearing ball axis for the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. The first, when the when we got the raw material, when we got the raw material, we need to clean it first by the supersonic cleaning wave. This is for the cleaning, but not only the machine cleaning, just the first time. The second, we need to hand, hand cleaning to make sure each part match our requirement. So put some oils for the excess, and here is for the absolute ticks in it. And then we're using the micro telescope to check the encoder disk, each one, and the test meter to check the roundness. This is make sure the XX, the one is, and check the CCD signal here. After the components pass our quality check, and we will go to the assembly line. The first, we will assemble the vertical XX. And this is the tangent screw production. The tangent screw actually is a quite important for the accuracy or for the stable things. Because the screw distance it required in the 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.35 millimeter. And for the one second accuracy, we're using the 0 0.25 millimeter screw distance screw. And this one we need to hand assembly by the workers because for the tangent screw, uh, you need to make sure the, the turning feeling is good and smooth. And now for the EDM housing, the telescope tube it in it. Before the lens go for the assembly, we need to clean both sides, inside and the outside for the objective lens. This is a pull up system for the IPs using. And this part is for the check the compensator accuracy to set the constant for the compensator. And this is the horizontal tangent screw. Go strike horizontal axis. So after tie the screw, we need to put the group on it, make sure the screw 
Shrex and the bearing for the horizontal axis. And after that, we need to rotate the EDM housing to make sure it goes smooth in any angle. And then, essentially, the vertical tangent screw. Dip the group on the screws. For the CCD, the four detector on the CCD. Apps encoder disk. This uh, does cover for protection. This is uh, the prism in the center of the EDM. So we install the objective lens now. So push in and tie the screw. And take off the, the special tools. This is the pass ring I mentioned before. And compensator installation. So in the first time, we need to check the optical specification, the parameter. We check the 2C eye angle, index angle. So the first in here, we need to make sure the optical specification. And then we go to the installation, the EDM electronic part. The first install the sliding ring now. So it can get the power supply from the main board, go to the EDM part. And install the, the angle main board. And connect the CCD wire. Display unit. And then we start to install the mechanical motherboard for the EDM side. It connect the optical coupling here and the emitting laser direct. After that, we need to check the emitting axis, same as the telescope axis first. We set up the tie gap around 30 meters away from in the building and using the mirror, so the double run is around 60 meters. When he, say, when he send out the laser dialogue, he will come back to this center. The radical, the crosshair will aim the center directly and the laser dialogue should be at the jet, same exact position as the crosshair aim on.
so this uh, need to address a little bit so he will to address This is uh, our special tools to offer the power supply to the emitting lasers because now it's not finished for the for the EDM ball installation. So after the laser dialog emitting adjustment, we need to double check the specification for the collimation index angle and the high low level so now he using she using the pin to adjust the vertical So after the emitting, we need to go to the adjust the receiving fiber here. We are using a field light telescope. Aim on it and adjust the receiving fiber. The laser dot should be same as now. Okay, we put the fiber on it. The receiving fiber to adjust the position. It should be same as the the radical center. All the screw is tight and double check. So this go through the housing for the next installation, the EDM ball. Keep the group on each school to make sure the school's tracks is not affect the accuracy. So now install the EDM ball and connect all the wire on it. And now we need to check the in-path reading the impact the, the value reading this is the baseline we check the the laser dialog the torrents for the paste torrents and this it can automatic to move by the control and the accuracy is a 0 0.1 millimeter each unit we need to come here to measure and record the torrents for, for that unit. And this is the aging room. All the instruments, after we finish the installation, we need to go to the aging room, stay for 48 hours to make sure all the, all the tracks is goes out. And after aging, we go to the QC department 
to do the final check, the final inspection, make sure all the specification match our design requirement. This is a check the tool, the compensator. Deep the group. So this is a QC department. We're using the wrong list checking inspection to, to check the angles. and each unit have the ID, the records. This arrow is the, the record for the whole process during production. So to here, I will, the, the factory tool is finished. So today, thank you for your time. And